Hi, I'm Adolf Oliver, and this video talks about how we give names to polynomials. First thing we need to do is make sure we remember what terms are, because polynomials are made out of terms. We might have something like this, 3x squared minus 4x plus 11. Okay, well notice, uh, there are no grouping symbols here, so that means the minus and the plus count as separators. Now, there is officially a plus in front of this 3. Remember, the leading term here, if you don't see a sign, you assume it to be plus, but there's nothing that uh, in front of it to uh, separate it from. So, the ones that are really separating things are these other guys. So what we have here, and by the way, the thing to remember is the sign goes with the guys behind it. So let's just remind you here, here's one term here, here's the second term here, and here is the third term there. So there'd be a total of three terms in this polynomial. The coefficient of the center term is negative 4, the first term plus 3, and the constant term in the end is plus 11. Now, we said plus and minus signs count as separators as long as they're not enclosed in grouping symbols. If I put a set of parents around this whole thing, then all of those plus and minus signs inside no longer count as separators, and we really just have one term here. Okay. So remember, when we talk about terms, they're separated by plus or minus signs that are not enclosed in grouping symbols. Now, uh, <clears throat> we name polynomials based on how many terms they have. Monomial indicates one term. So it could be negative 5y or just something like uh, 11. Okay, both of these are single terms. A binomial has two terms. Bi means two, so this could be 3x squared minus 5x. Okay, two terms, that would be a binomial. A trinomial has three terms. Tri, of course, meaning three, so we might have this is negative 2 x squared plus x plus 12. Okay, one, two, three terms. Monomials, binomials, and trinomials will show up a lot in the work we do with polynomials, so they have special names. Monomial, again, a single term. Binomial has two terms. Trinomial has three. Anytime you get with polynomials that have more than three terms, then you just say something like polynomial with four terms, and this might have 7x to the third minus 3x squared plus 5x minus, let's say, 7. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, but no special name. We would just say polynomial with four terms. Now, another thing that we talk about in the polynomial business is uh, the degree of a polynomial. Degree of a term is the power of the variables in that term. So if you have like 8x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 11, okay, well, What's the degree of each term, this first term? The degree is 4. Okay, the second term, the degree is 2. And the last term, which is a constant, well, sometimes folks say degree of 0, but you can also just say constant. Well, let's look at the more common terms that are applied to this. Okay, if you have just a constant, like 83, Okay, then there's no variable here. Folks sometimes call it the zero degree, but constant, of course, it is a constant value. 
linear first degree 2x minus 5 okay when we see a variable it does not have a power with it <clears throat> we know of course we are to assume that that power is 1 and so the uh, term right here has degree 1 so we would say this is linear quadratic well quadratic could have x squared minus 3x plus 6 now by the way <clears throat> When we're talking about degrees up here, we're talking about degrees of the individual term. But when we use these names, we're talking about the degree of the whole polynomial. And the degree of the whole polynomial is always the highest term in that particular polynomial. That's why the 83 here was constant. The linear one, the highest degree is first. This is a constant, but this is higher. Here in the one that we're going to call quadratic, the highest degree is second. This one's first, and this one, of course, is a constant. So when you're naming the degree of a polynomial, the whole thing, you look for the highest degree of any of the terms. <clears throat> now, cubic, of course, better have somebody that's uh, being cubed. So negative 2x cubed plus 7. Okay, well, here we go. The uh, degree of this term is 3. This is a constant, so this is the highest, and so we would say this is a cubic polynomial. Now, of course, anything higher than that, we just use a general term. We talk about it as fourth degree polynomial or fifth degree. Fourth degree polynomial would have something like this. Y to the fourth, let's say, uh, plus y squared minus 1. Okay, well, what's the highest degree that we have here? Fourth degree. Now, by the way, there are three terms in this. So we would say this is a trinomial with fourth degree. Well, this naming process will become more apparent to you as you uh, work your way through all the polynomial business, but this is an introduction to how it works. Let's just practice on a few of these here. And uh, notice now, we have here two terms. So I would call this a binomial. But notice <clears throat> that the highest power is 1 here. I could put a 1 with that x. This is just a constant term. So I would say that this could be a linear, meaning first degree, binomial. Okay, that's how you come up with these names. Now, the next one here is just a single term. So it's a monomial, and this is a constant. So we simply say in this one, constant monomial. Now, the next guy after it here is also a monomial, but it has a variable, which, of course, since uh, we didn't see anything, we could assume it to be 1. I put the 1 in there. And so... The first degree here is linear, so I say linear monomial. Now, the next guy down here is a trinomial. The highest degree is 2. Remember, this x would be first power, and this would be constant. So again, when you talk about the degree of the whole polynomial, you pick the highest degree of any of the terms. So second degree means it's quadratic. That would be second degree. And it's a trinomial. So we would call this a quadratic trinomial. Well, hopefully you're getting the idea of how this goes. Let's take a look at a last bunch of them here and see what's going on with these. 
Okay. Here we go again. The uh, first guy we've got up here, there's three terms. One, two, three. And, uh, but look at the powers. Uh, eighth power here, fourth power here, and constant here. Okay. So looking at this then, we could say that this is a uh, eight degree uh, or polynomial with degree eight. You can phrase it different ways, but uh, say it's an eighth degree polyn uh, trinomial. Yeah, because there's three terms. So once again, the highest power is 8, so that would make it 8 degree, and there are three terms still, so an 8 degree trinomial. Okay, the next guy underneath this, <clears throat> notice we have four terms here, so we'll just be saying four term polynomial, but the highest degree right here is the cube, <clears throat> all the rest of the degrees are lower. So, what I would say is this is a cubic four-term polynomial. Okay, well, something with a little bit more to it coming up here. Let's see how many terms we got here. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to call it a five-term polynomial. Now, one of the things we'll talk about in the future is writing the answers in descending order. That's not a standing rule, but it's a real convenient thing so we can uh, more easily compare all our answers if we follow that. But notice, fifth degree here, third degree, second degree, first degree, but sixth degree over here. Okay, so this is going to be a sixth degree, and how many terms we say? One, two, three, four, five. Six degree, five term polynomial. Well, one last one to look at on the bottom here, and the process is the same. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four terms in this one. And uh, degree six, degree one, degree two, degree seven. Okay, so the seven is the highest. So we talk about this as seventh degree. And again, we had four terms, so seventh degree, four term polynomial.